Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fearlessly Authentic. I'm your host, Jody Harrison Bauer, and I'm so happy to have you here with me. I am in New York City with Dr. Joshua Zuckerman. We are going to get into it, plastic surgery, everything that goes along with it. But in the meantime, if you are a new listener, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the show where we educate you. You take that education, you feel empowered. We're going to entertain you a little bit today because Dr. Zuckerman's very funny and we hope that this information will help to inspire you so you can live a fearlessly authentic life because, you know, I believe at the ripe old age of 62 that if we're not here to live in our truth, then what the hell are we here for? So um, please join me and listen to the show. You can find me on YouTube. I am on all social platforms at Jody Harrison Bauer, but I like YouTube because you get to check us out. You get to see how handsome or or gorgeous and handsome and exotic my guest look. And you could see me, I'm always in black. Um, but I really am so happy that you're joining us today. So um, without further ado, oh, I have to remember to tell you to rate, review, and subscribe. We have a five-star rating and we want to continue that. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I want to introduce my guest today, Dr. Joshua Zuckerman. Thank you for coming out of your busy day and joining me. Thanks for having me, Jody. This is so fun. I've never done one of these before, but you're one of my favorite patients. Oh, you I say have... that to all of your patients. <laughs> only, only most of them. <laughs> only most of them, right. <laughs> uh, no, but it's it's really an honor to be here. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. You know, I, I don't often get asked to talk about myself that much and talk about what I do yeah. in a public forum. So this is pretty cool. Um, you know, I love... Be, being able to destigmatize plastic surgery a little right. bit and uh, you know talk about just kind of how fun and how empowering it can be so uh this totally. is it's, it's great to be here i know i and i think you're the right person to talk about it i really do so i'm going to give you a little bit of information about dr joshua zuckerman who is a board certified plastic surgeon and he has been in practice in manhattan for over a decade he trained at brown university and nyu is an and is the founder and director of Zuckerman Plastic Surgery on Fifth Avenue, which is where we are right now. He has been selected as Castle Connolly Top Doctor for Metro New York five years running, and he has been featured across numerous media outlets, including the Doctors on CBS, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Cosmopolitan Magazine, among many others. He specializes in providing the highest standard of cosmetic plastic surgery of the body and face, as well as a wide array of non-surgical aesthetics, from Botox to fillers, lasers, and more. So you do it all. I do it all. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, you know, I like to think of myself as a First and foremost, a bit of a mommy plastic surgeon. You know, I mean, I take care of a lot of a lot of moms, young, old, and in the middle. Um, I do I do a lot of tummy talks, do a lot of liposuction, a lot of body stuff. Um, but in general, just things to make people feel good. Um, so you know, in, inject some filler in the face, do a little <laughs> Botox. You know, and it, it, anything to make you feel like a million bucks, ideally. I I love that because um, there's so many people that have this bad feeling about plastic surgeons, about getting work done on their face or their body. I know that when I had my children in 89 and 93, nobody was getting mommy makeovers. It wasn't even something we discussed. You just like, if you gained a lot of weight, lose it. And then if your boobs are saggy, you know, there weren't a lot of people talking about it. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show, because I think it's really important to talk about it and take away any type of shame or judgment. Um, and, and yeah, I, th I think that's that's very important. And plastic surgery, or at least the PR end of plastic surgery has come a long way. And plastic surgery itself has come a long way in the last you know, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, sure, it, it used to be kind of a hush-hush thing. And now in the, in the era, uh, era of the internet and of social media, um, it is just so much more discussed and so much more public. And that's a good thing. Uh, you know, plastic surgery done right um, can really just improve how you look and how you feel how you feel about yourself by leaps and bounds. Um, and it's it's not it doesn't have to be a scary thing. It can be done safely. It can be done easily and comfortably by nice people in a nice setting. Um, you know, we'll we'll get you through the recovery. We'll get you through any kind of any any of the concerns before, during, and after. It's really not not a bad thing at any level. Well, I just think that maybe some people do fear it 
But be- before we get into the fear, mm-hmm. the confidence that you help build in the people that come to see you, why did you want to become a plastic surgeon? It's it's an interesting question. I get asked that a lot, actually. Um, you know, I, going into medical school a long time ago at this point, God. Oh, stop it. Uh, <laughs> stop. I, uh, I had a good idea. And children when- older than you. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Um, that, that I wanted to be a surgeon of some sort. I mean, I, obviously, I, you know, I like, I like working with my hands. I like doing things where I see an immediate result. Uh, I like instant gratification. I'm not, I'm not that patient. Right. Um, but at the same time, you know, plastic surgery, I love the fact that you can, you can see the result of what you do. There's, a, there's that part of it. And also just, it, it makes people legitimately feel good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, you know, it's one thing to, okay, you know, I've taken out your gallbladder and you, and, right. <laughs> you know, you needed that done so you can, you can, so you can live. Um, versus, you know, you come in, you've had, you've had three kids, your body is blown to hell yeah. and there's not a whole lot the diet and exercise is going to do about it. I love the satisfaction of being able to, you know, go and do something about that and give, give somebody back their confidence. Um, and that's what was really attractive to me, especially going into cosmetic plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I, I have zero regrets. I love what I do. I think you have to know that you like have good hands, right. And that aesthetically you can look at somebody's face or body and say, this is this is what I would change. This is how I can make this person feel better, look better. Because the first thing somebody wants when they come to see you, I'm sure, is that they feel like crap in their body or their face has a lot of sun damage or whatever it is that they want, nose job, whatever it is. Sure. They want to feel better in the vessel that we were born in, right? Of course, we all think of ourselves as our twenty-two-year-old selves, you know, young and perfect and unblemished. Um, and you know, the reality is, you know, time is a thing and aging is a thing. I love that <laughs> timing is a thing and aging is a thing. I'm stealing that right. from you. It's, you. Yeah, I just it's a that. thing. I'm, right, right. Um, so, you know, I think uh, it's. Sorry, I lost, sorry, I lost my train of thought. No, you, we were saying that how it's just aging is a thing. People come to you to feel and look better. And as we age, like we can do things. I've been in the fitness business for 40 right. years. I've been in shape for 40 years, but shit still happens. Right. My skin gets looser. Right. My I get lines on my face because I've gone through a lot in 62 right. years. It's very true. And there are things you can do about that. But a lot of the conversation that I have with a prospective patient is it is the management of expectations and it's communication. It's understanding, you know, what, what, why are you here? What makes you feel insecure? What makes you feel bad about yourself? Why are you seeking plastic surgery? And, you know, sometimes, sometimes that's an unreasonable request. Um, You know, I can't take a, you know, 70 year old lady who's lost a hundred pounds and make her look like an underwear model. Right. I'm so, I'm so glad you said that because I've talked to a bunch of plastic surgeons in the last 15 years, just about different things. And one of them said he was a little arrogant. Um, I know a lot of surgeons get that rap, right? They get that bad rap and you're, you seem to be very humble, but I mean, look, you have this body in a, in, in that little tiny table back there and you are going to give them the desired look they came for that's a lot of stress you know and you've got you're almost playing like god right i know yeah i mean it's a little bit of a cliche i guess right, but i mean is. i mean but yes uh i mean you take a step back from it you know it's a, it's 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 just parts in the end you know i mean they're you know it's manipulating tissue just like a tailor manipulates a pair of pants, you know? And, you know, there are rules for dealing with tissues and preserving blood supply and how far you can make skin stretch and, and what you can do. Um, and some of that just comes from experience and come, comes from training. And, you know, in some play, in some cases, not getting, not getting the ideal outcome every time in the past and learning from all of that. Right. And just knowing, knowing what you can get with somebody standing in front of you. Um, I think that's realistic, you know, not, not taking a 70 year old and making her look like a swimwear model. Although Dr. Zuckerman, there could be women in their seventies who look like, you know, swimwear models, but I understand what you're saying. It's, um, it's, you can't create somebody to look completely different. And I know that's what I've tried to explain to so many people about plastic surgery. Not that I'm a surgeon is that, you can't take somebody who looks one way and completely transform them to look 
completely different. They you're, you're going to tweak them. Yeah. It, you, everything is a little bit of a tweak. So I found you because this is what we're going to talk about yeah, today. Yeah, okay? fire, yeah, fire away. This is all you. So um, my whole life, basically, since I was 15 years old, I had a little bit of a belly. I was never overweight. I gained 45 and 35 pounds with my daughters, and I lost the weight after three months. Amazing. Right? And I, I've always had, I'm Jewish, so I have like pretty good skin. You know, it's pretty, it's not super thin. It's not super thick, but it's like good, yeah, good it's Jewish Mediterranean, Mediterranean yeah, skin. Exactly. We're blessed a little right, bit. Right, we are blessed a little bit. Um, and, but my stomach always bothered me and I would poke at it and poke at it and poke at it. I competed in fitness shows for 10 years. I won two world bikini shows and I still at 105 pounds and like 15% body fat, my stomach still stuck right. out. Right. So, but I was so afraid and I'm not one who's afraid of going under the knife if I'm under anesthesia. I'm a baby when it comes to the other stuff. Sure. But I had come to a point in my life after I closed my studio and was retired from the fitness business. So I didn't have a studio to go into anymore. And I said, you know what? This is time for me. I'm over 60. My skin is getting looser. As I told you, this was the first summer that I didn't feel comfortable wearing a bikini. Right. And it's not because my belly stuck out so much more. It's the skin. Totally. And I'm like, what the hell? What do you mean? God, what are you doing to me? I always had good skin. Why do I have this loose skin? And it's friggin' age. 100%. So yeah, as we age, especially post-menopause, yeah. you lose collagen, you lose elastin, your skin just doesn't stretch like it used to. And it's also years in the sun. Uh, so, it's, right. so it's a matter of hormonal changes. It's a matter of uh, of sun exposure. Right. Um, and there's not a whole lot you can do about some of that once it's once it's done. So, you know, yada, yada, plastic surgery. Um, there that was a reality check for me because I never had loose skin in my entire life. Right. I never had any cellulite. And all of a sudden, like more in the stomach area. And I'm like, shit, I have to do something about it. And I did my research. I did a lot of research. And I found you. Uh, I, go ahead. Well, th thank you. So, so I mean, a, a word about research. Yes, there, it's it's hard. It's hard to find somebody who you can trust. Find a plastic yes. surgeon who you know you're sure who you're willing to take that leap with. Yes, because this is a big deal. It's a big decision for everybody who comes through the door. So fine, I've done however many thousand operations on people. So you know, this is just what I do every day for my job. For every person coming through the door, this is a big freaking deal. It is. Um, and you know. And surgery day is one of the biggest days of their life. And so it's not to be taken lightly. So sure, how does somebody find a plastic surgeon? Go on the internet, ask your friends. Um, and there's a lot of noise out there. There is. Honestly. There is. And there are a lot of people, physicians out there, surgeons, who are going to just take your money and not perform the surgery to, to what you want. You're not going to get what you're looking for. And to me, that was very important. I needed somebody who was kind. I needed somebody who was in their mid forties that I know that sounds like a weird thing. Sorry, guys, that I'm talking about age here, but I wanted, I, I was pretty, you know, it could have been male or female, but I knew that I, you know, just like when I would get a trainer, I liked a male trainer. I figured, I don't know. You just get in there and you you do this stuff. So I wanted somebody, all of those things. I was looking in New York because I figured this was the best place to look. I live in Connecticut. And I, I talked to you and I immediately felt like this doctor understands me. Um, he's kind. He's listening to me. And he told me that he's going to be able to make me look better and feel better. Well, I mean, you, you were starting from a good place, Joey. Uh, All right. I mean, explain to them like what goes on. Like, yeah, explain to them that I was coming from a good place. Like, so, so in all honesty, so one, yeah, yeah, you you had done you had done your research. You knew what you you knew what you were looking for. You were very articulate about what you needed and what your insecurities were, and you know what you wanted from me, and that and that was great. Um, you had, you know, had been through some of this before with other surgeons in the past. Um, so you knew a little bit what you were getting into. Right. 
Um, and you're also, I mean, look at you. <laughs> Sweet. Um, you know, you're you, you've taken very good care of yourself. Right. Um, you know, you you carry no extra weight on you. You have great bone structure. Um, you're honestly an easy patient to operate on. Um, so you know, if everybody could come into my office, you know, with you know, not only with the mental wherewithal, but with the underlying structure of you, I'd be extremely happy. <laughs> Uh, so you you surgically were not that challenging. Oh, so I, I wanted to be a challenge. I like being a challenge. No, nobody wants to be a surgical no, challenge. No, I didn't. Um, I you know I so I I love nice and easy. I knew that I knew that I could hit it out of the park with you, and I also like talking to you. Um, I thought you were cool. I thought you were somebody who I'd like to involve in the scene in my office, yeah. which I think is kind of a nice place to be. Absolutely, um, love everybody here. Yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm glad I checked all the all the boxes for you um, because you know it's it, it this has been. Great great for me from start to finish. So thank you. Um, so that made me feel more comfortable yeah. when you said, look, you've got good skin. I'm just going to like basically cut you here. <laughs> and I said, please make the incision as low as possible. You really worked with me on there. I brought in one of my competition bikini bottoms. I knew we couldn't go that low, but like we went pretty low. Yeah, we I mean, so way. We, right, well, we, yeah, you know, we, I had you wear the bikini bottom, and like I saw, I marked where it sat, and we planned your incision according to right. that. Uh, and I knew it was something we could accomplish. I didn't need to, you know, wrap your tummy tuck incision all the way around the side. No, why not? Extra. Why do you do that? If you could explain to everybody, why do you do that sometimes, and why not on me? Well, okay, so we're talking about tummy tuck here, and how tummy yes. tuck works um is you know it's it's taking off extra skin and fat uh, ultimately from the lower abdomen but also tightening up the underlying structure of the tummy um and making the belly button look really cute i love my belly button i love that's like my favorite part i'm like look i look 25 and I, by the way the the idea behind this was not to look 25 right because as you said at the very beginning i'm not going to ever look 25 that's never been the goal no. The goal is to look the best I can in where I am in my life right now. Right. Yeah, I mean, you have very reasonable expectations. Yes. And that, and that and that's something I also didn't mention. Like they, that, like that, that is so important going into this. Um, that yeah, I mean, you 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 knew what we could get out of this, and we arrived together at yes, I can I can make you look like the best version of yourself. Exactly. Um, but I'm not going to make you look like somebody different. I'm not going to make you look like you know, a college student. So it's exactly. And I didn't even. I mean, that would have been nice, but no. I mean, like that wasn't the expectation. So right. okay. So explain. So I had a tummy tuck. Right. I had a full tummy tuck. Yes. We talked about possibly doing a mini because mm -hmm. I didn't want the big incision. That was, you know, in talking about fear. Mm -hmm. That was my biggest fear. Right. What was I going to feel like? I liked my body. Yes, I have had breast augmentations, but you know, the the scar isn't much and it fades right. very fast. Very but now I'm going to have this big scar from hip to hip. And I thought, oh my God, like, what is this going to look like? Am I going to feel like I'm scarred for life? You know what I mean? But then I got to the point where I just couldn't stand the extra skin anymore. And by the way, I didn't have that much extra yeah, skin. Yeah, it, wasn't that bad. it wasn't that bad, but it was <laughs> enough to cut and get rid of. Yeah. So explain the difference between why you would do it hip to hip or go behind well, so, you know, the so the difference between a mini tummy tuck and a full tummy tuck and some of these other extended tummy tuck or a circumferential body lift, I mean, it depends on your needs. Most patients coming through my door, ladies who've had babies, um, a full tummy tuck is what's going to be the answer. What that lets me do is address really the entire abdominal wall. So we need to make a big enough incision so that we're pulling skin from the entire width of the abdomen. So like a shade. Like is exactly like a shade. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Um, you know, don't don't YouTube surgical videos unless oh you're grossed out. Um, I did. I never look at them. I, I it, good. I, I tell people unless you unless you're used to watching surgery, just don't. Right. All surgery looks terrible if you're not not used to seeing it. I can't stand the sight of blood. Right. Exactly. So fine. Just take my word. For yeah. It. Um, but yeah, so we make that incision. We make another incision around the belly button. Your actual belly button, the inside part anyway, stays where it is. Um, and everything else moves. So we free up the whole piece of skin like a window shade. Mm -hmm. And then underneath, we need to do some tightening of the abdominal wall. So part of that, you know, that bulge that you have, yes. that, 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 that is so, so common, um, is just stretch of the abdominal wall and laxity of the tissues. Um, that happens after having children? Almost always. Okay. Yeah. Almost everybody who's had 
you know, not necessarily one. It's usually worse after multiple kids, mm -hmm. um, but can happen after any number of kids. Has some irreversible stretch of the abdominal wall and often stretch of the skin as well. Um, and that's that's what a tummy tuck addresses. Um, so it's tightening up the tissues underneath like a corset on the inside that you never see, but makes you just structurally flatter, smoother and smaller. And then on that window shade of skin that we've freed up, taking off, you know, a piece from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then what's left, stretching it all the way down so it's nice and flat and taut, sewing it up, and then doing my belly button tricks. And I've, you know, I, I have a technique for the belly button. Okay. Uh, which I, which I, which I came up with. Oh, okay. Um, it's not, it's a non-trivial thing. You know, if you start looking around the internet at tummy tuck belly buttons, most of them are awful. They're awful. They're awful. That's why I love my belly button. <laughs> I mean, I literally pick up my shirt and go, look at my belly button. Yeah. Like, forget that my stomach is flat now. I mean, I love that. But it's the the belly button. It's a really good belly button. Yeah, it looks like it's supposed to look like a belly button they were it's born with. Really pretty. Um, and that's the idea. So you took just so I understand because I don't think you we talked about it, but then I I don't think we've talked about it since. So you take the abdominal wall muscles, and you and you kind of fold it in on itself, literally like a corset. Fold it. Okay. Yeah. So it gets folded down the midline I like see. this with a with rows of stitches which are very strong and hold it together so it's not going anywhere. Okay. Um, right. So Never. it just makes every, so it's literally like a corset on the inside. So it just cinches the waist a little bit. All that bulge just gets pulled in and just flattened out. Okay. And where a mini tummy tuck is a little different, it doesn't, it doesn't touch the abdominal wall. Is that correct? It can, but it doesn't touch anything above the belly button. So okay. a mini tummy tuck, slightly shorter incision, though not that much shorter. Um, it is the myth that like, okay, I, oh, I'll just, I'll just do a mini. That's just what I was it. thinking I it'll would be, do. It'll be just like a C-section scar. It's not. It's about an inch shorter on either side. Right. That's why I went full and I wanted the full effect. It's right. Exactly. It's a much more powerful tool to do a full tummy tuck. It lets me restructure the whole abdominal wall, give you the cute belly button, make sure that you're nice and flat. You're not, you're not cutting any corners. Right. Um, right. And I think with the mini, so many do. So then, so you, if you go all the way around, is that for like a full body thingy? So that, that's generally in people who've lost a hundred pounds. Okay. okay. Uh, that sort of thing where you have, so patients who have either, either have had weight loss surgery or through great motivation have lost a ton of weight and are left with hanging skin, you know, everywhere. And in the, in the case of a circumferential lift, it's in the tummy, it's on the sides and even in the lower back, it's sagging in the butt and I you see. can sag in the outside of the thighs. And yeah. You can address that with basically a tummy tuck that That's goes amazing. all the way around. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really cool operation, but it's, you know, with any of these, it's a trade-off. You're trading contour for scar. You're putting an incision on somebody. Right, and right. So when now when you do a tummy tuck, do you always do liposuction with that? Is that protocol or is that something just you do? Liposuction is a tool. Um, you know, it, it depends. You know, somebody who doesn't have much, I mean, I do tummy tucks on very thin people who just don't have any fat to liposuction. Mm -hmm. My standard tummy tuck or mo my most common tummy tuck is exactly what I just described, plus some liposuction to the sides. Did you do that to me? Uh, yeah, we did a little lipo to your sides. Mm -hmm. Um, and we and did, did, we did, we did, we did your back too. Yeah, we did. Well, when I came to after I, after yeah. I was, and, um, the nurse who was with me, said, oh yeah, we, we went after those flanks. And I'm like, what? I have flanks? I had I had flanks? <laughs> like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I, I thought the those. only fat was in my belly. And then you were like, well, you didn't have that much fat in your belly, Jody." And I'm like, damn it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And that was the reason, if we go back to the beginning, why I wanted to finally do this. I'd finally come to the point where I said, I know I'm not fat. Right. Okay. I never was fat. Right. I mean, so I knew, and please, for everybody listening, you know, it was that I always took really good care of my body and I had followed a healthy diet. So I knew that I didn't, and that's why it bothered me so much because I knew that I took such good care of my body. Why do I have this protrusion here? So when somebody comes to you and they're, let's say, 20 pounds overweight sure. and they want a tummy tuck. Do you tell them that they need to get to their ideal weight first or be within five or 10 pounds of that ideal weight? It depends. Okay. You know, if somebody is 20 pounds over their ideal weight, you know, I will often, you know, I will usually submit to doing the operation as long as I feel like I can get them a reasonable result and that they're of the understanding of the degree of result that I can get. There are limits to this. I tell Even if you do a lot of lipo. 
Well, right, but there are, there are rules. There are rules oh, of tissues, right? And okay. we have to preserve blood supply and make sure everything heals. So one thing you so we don't think about those things. Right, it, but it's kind of it's kind of my job. Right. If, you, if, you, if I make an incision on you and it won't close, it's an issue. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, so God, that's scary. If, well, right, there's a reason that you know, I get paid yeah. to do this. Right. Um, so what you can't do is just liposuction the hell out of the entire abdomen okay. and do a tummy tuck. That's too much of a hit to the blood supply oh. of that piece of tissue that we're freeing up from its underside attachments and stretching. That's enough of a hit to the blood supply to begin with. If you then really liposuction it, remove tissue from the underside of it, it's it in most cases just can't take it. And you can sew it together, but you'll have a piece of skin that's not going to live. Mm. And that's a disaster. That is, that's an unacceptable outcome. So th there are rules to what you can liposuction okay. with a tummy tuck. You can you can come over onto the kind of outer aspects of the abdomen a little bit you can do some contouring there mm -hmm. you can be controlled with how you, with what you leave stuck down and what you do free up and there's there's some subtlety to it um but i can only get you as flat in the middle of your abdomen as really your body will let me so if you have a, a layer of fat that's two inches thick oh. it's it'll thin a little bit as i stretch it i see but it's not gonna i can't get it down to nothing i'm glad you you're explaining this because i always thought that if like even if you're like 20 pounds overweight that you could just go in there and lipo it to death and but then they say that if you i i've read all this is that because then i went freaked out because you you went after my flanks which i completely forgot yeah, about for, which are still a little sore after they still well, are yeah, sore lipo, three, three months out it, it's it means your body's still healing it's yeah it's still settling down lipo it, lipo itself is minimally invasive it's all happening under the skin where nobody sees mm. what is actually pretty traumatic to the tissue to the tissues themselves and there's some remodeling that has to go on and that takes a while to fully settle down so what that means if it's still sore and you press on it yeah. the result's going to get even better i know i know i can't <laughs> wait and i'm wearing like a crop top down which i never never would have i would never sit like this normally That's because awesome. i was self-conscious of right. my belly thing. so and the reason that I wanted to talk about this today was to bring some normalization yeah. to this conversation and i always felt i didn't tell anybody this is my out oh, i'm i'm outing myself right now yeah um that i didn't talk about it because i felt that people would judge me because i've always gotten judged for not being like a normal person like exercising back in the 90s eating protein when nobody even knew what a protein right. was and eating every three hours and my friends thought I was crazy. I went to the gym every single day and I just had a lifestyle that nobody around me had. So I always was doing things like kind of outside the box. And I just felt like, oh, what are people gonna say? And then I started feeling so good about myself. I'm like, I need to share this with more women. It's awesome. Because they, I don't want women to feel any shame or judgment in doing this. It's for you. It's this is all it's for. Is for you, all you should be doing it is for yourself. A hundred percent. This is a this is a feel. I'm in the feel good game, as I, as I like to tell people. You know, it's where this is surgery to make you feel better about yourself and give you confidence. Do you do tummy tucks on men as well? Yes, sometimes. I mean, probably probably less than ten percent, but uh, but we certainly do them, uh, especially guys who've lost weight. Mm -hmm. um, often massive weight loss patients. But sometimes just a guy who's lost, you know, thirty forty pounds, and the same complaint. You know, you have a little something hanging down, a little bit of extra skin, a little pooch that's not going to go away with diet and exercise, and it bothers you enough. So yeah, tell me. Okay, tell me. so that's a really really good point. Taking getting rid of something that's not going to be taken away with diet and exercise. Right. So that's why I think I'm a prime example of that because, you know, you do everything you do and you hear so many stories about they couldn't get rid of this. It's stubborn. You can't get rid of it. Right. That does exist all the time. And I think that's where maybe the shame for me came from in coming out and finally talking about this is like, come on, I'm a fitness expert. Like if I can't get rid of this, how am I going to get rid of it? And then I realize I, I cannot get rid of it with diet and exercise. Well, right. And that's, and that's where I come in and it's a responsible way to take control of the situation. Honestly, right. uh, you know, as long as you, I mean, again, 
do your research, find somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, but it's a very reasonable thing to do. I mean, you have done everything that you possibly can, especially you. I mean, some it, it, you know, patients often come and see me and they haven't necessarily done everything they possibly right. can. Right. But they, everybody says they did. They I do, know. Which is fine. Now, now, certainly no judgment for me. But I, I mean, it's true, especially, you know, after you've had kids or if you've lost a lot of weight, your tissues are just different. And there's nothing that you're going to be able to do other than surgery, which is going to get it back to where it used to be. Right. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it, this is just another tool in our armamentarium, so to speak. Right. You, know, you can work so you can work so hard on your body and on bettering yourself. This is just, you know, kind of the next step. Um, in bettering yourself. I well, I just want to tell you that I love the way I feel in my body. I, I think I might've even cried after the first time I actually had the guts to look at myself yeah. and it just, I want everybody to know about you and what you do. Your bedside manner is amazing. Um, you were easy to talk to. You never asked, made me feel dumb for asking a lot of questions and I'm also very, like you said at the beginning, realistic and patient. I understand that you've got to, you can't speed up the process. It's like me training clients. I always say to them, trust the process. You're not going to lose 40 pounds in one month. It's unrealistic. Absolutely. And is that hard for you as a surgeon for your patients to come back and say, doc, you told me I was going to look this way, but I still don't look that way. What do you, how do you deal with that type of thing? Unrealistic expectations. It's, it's one of the, it's one of the challenges, certainly okay. it's something that I face every day. Uh, you know, this is a game of managing expectations more mm. than almost anything else. Um, so on the one hand, yes. Yeah, so tell me what I think I can get you, you know, from the outset, but then, you know, you've just had surgery. What do you look like post-op day one? You have bandages, you're swollen, you might have some bruising, there might be blood on the bandages, you have drains. drains. I mean, I mean, there, there, there are things that are, you know, objectively a little bit unpleasant in the beginning. Um, and, you know, it's- You my, feel like hell. I mean, you're, you're beaten up. You've beaten just had up. a big operation. You know, we do, I, was, I, I do everything that I can. You know, mm -hmm. we inject long-acting local anesthetic to try and minimize the pain in the tummy. Uh, you know, we, you know, do everything by it as a traumatic technique as possible um, to not beat up the tissues more than we need to, you know, take appropriate pain control steps post-op. But at the same time, there's only so much you can do. It's surgery and your body needs to recover. And that is a process. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of handholding with this. So we, yeah. we, we like to no, say. And, you, and, yeah. and I think that's why I felt so comfortable with you. It's, I didn't make the right decision when I got divorced 20 years ago. I chose a lawyer who had good bedside manner and I should have chosen like a shark and asshole. Um, but this is different. You know, yeah. this is different. I don't want a dick like doing surgery on me yeah. because the bedside manner is really, excuse my French. Um, yeah. It's, I didn't want that. And so that's why I felt like it was such a good match. And so for anybody listening right now, if you are thinking about having any plastic surgery, this is not a commercial for Dr. Zuckerman, I... but <laughs> I am promoting him because he did such a great job with me. And I was so scared. I was really, really scared. And then you were running two hours late and I was like, maybe this is a sign. Maybe I should just go home. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I, you know, it's, I was running two hours late because I had surgery that I was doing on somebody else. Right, and right. I no, I know. Everybody there do and I, you know what? And, and actually, case. what I thought about that, I said, my daughter was with me, and I said, you know what? It's okay because he's making sure that that person's okay before he leaves them. So I liked that, actually. Right. right. But at the same time, yeah, you're sitting there twiddling you're like, your thumbs oh. and you haven't eaten since yesterday. Right. It's like your thoughts are racing. And yeah, totally. of course. And, you know, I, I feel bad doing that to anybody. Of course. But um, you made up for it. I, 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 I appreciate that. Yeah. So also you put something on my stomach, which helps to tighten the, I still don't really understand what you did with that tightening thing. Well, so we did a couple of things we did for you. So I, I so I, I did a, I mean, on the operating table, we did, you know, we did a tummy tuck, just like I talked about. And then with your back, you know, you didn't have a lot of extra fat there, but you did have a little bit of skin laxity, just a little bit of liposuction. And then we did the Renuvion skin tightening. Renuvion used to be called J-plasma. Mm -hmm. um, and it uses, it's one of these kind of newer things. It's an energy-based modality 
that tighten skin. And it works, it's incredibly safe. Uh, you know, th things like this have been around for a little while, laser liposuction, things like that. And none of them have really worked that well. Renuvion, I really trust. Uh, we do it in conjunction with liposuction. It's a probe that we pass underneath the skin that uses radio frequency energy to apply heat, which makes the collagen fibers contract almost like the fibers of a pair of pants that you put in the dryer. So it kind of, sh it shrink wraps. I had no idea. Pretty like cool. I literally had, you're like, <laughs> no, we'll do da, 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 and then tighten your stomach. And I'm like, sure, just tighten it, make it look yeah. flat. Don't make me look like SpongeBob. I want to keep my curves. We talked about that a lot. Yeah. And you made me actually look a little curvier. Like my clothes, yeah. my, everything on my waist is like loose on me. Yeah. Again, I could have never sat here comfortably. I've always would have worn a jacket over me to cover my belly area. And I still, when I, this sounds really weird, but when I sit on the toilet, <laughs> right? Everybody knows that feeling when you're sitting yeah. on the toilet and you look down and you're like, oh, I don't have a belly anymore. Amazing, right? It is amazing. Awesome. And so I just want to thank you so much oh, because yeah. you're, you're making me feel amazing. You're making me turn red. Uh, but, the, but honestly, this is, this is why I do this. Uh, you yeah. know, the, the, it's, it's kind of these, these accolades and this happiness that's the, you know, this, this is what gets me coming to work every day. It's, honestly. Yeah, it's, no, and I know I, not to compare, but like, I know that like when I help a client and I see them making the good choices for themselves, they come back and they're like, thank you, Jody. Yeah. Thank you. I wouldn't have been able to, it, it makes, that's the reason I do what I did. Right. And that's the reason you do what you do. Now you don't just do tummy tucks and mommy makeovers. You said you also do, what's your second, the tummy tucks are like your number one thing. That's number one. That's yeah. why I came to you. Right. I mean, that's, I, I've done uh, in excess of 2000 tummy tucks. I mean, I, it's, I do more than anybody I know. Uh, and it's my favorite operation, but you know, we, and we combine those with breast operations and butt operations and other liposuction. It's not the only thing that I do. I mean, this morning I just did a neck lift and some laser resurfacing on a patient. Uh, and I love that stuff too. You know, I think the face stuff is really cool. And, you know, a lot of plastic surgeons as their career progresses, you know, move, from doing more body to doing more face. Right. Um, and, you know, you you grow up with your patient population a little bit to some degree. Oh, that's interesting to think of it like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it, I mean, anybody can get these body operations, but it tends to skew a little bit younger, you know, women who've just, who've had babies like in, in the last 30s. 10 years. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but people getting facelifts and neck lifts, I mean, that's, you know, you're not, not going to really think about doing that until you're at least in your fifties, probably. Right. So I am on the older side to get a tummy tuck, wouldn't you say? But I mean, strictly by the numbers, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Why did it, I wait so long? I don't know. Why'd you wait so long? I was scared. Yeah, I mean, which which a lot of people are. I was scared. Uh, which I mean, that that's not unreasonable, and that's the reason a lot a, a lot of people give. Um, and you know, it's again, it's surgery. It's a big leap. It's a big unknown. It's a big thing to undertake um, for for vanity's sake, so to speak. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, then certainly no judgment here in waiting so long waiting so long um but i mean that said you're kind of within the vast middle of really? the of the age range i I've, I've done tons and tons of tummy tucks in people in their 60s um i've done many on people in their 70s my oldest my my record is probably 76 and i i have a handful that are in this wow. kind of 74 to 76 range well, i get to tell everybody don't wait until you know it's never too late never too late never too late it but but you know what what i'm thinking right now is like why didn't i do it 10 years ago I was probably too busy with what I was doing right. and I you definitely need the downtime. Yeah, you you have to give yourself some time to recover definitely. You do. Um it's really it's a good I mean you can be back doing most jobs by 2 weeks or so but really until you're back <laughs> I could have <laughs> never done eyes. it. I could have. No, but every, you know there there's some vari variability between sure. tests, obviously. But it's a good 6 weeks until you're really, you know, feeling like yourself yes. you can do I I set you free to do whatever you want. You did. You were like go to Miami. Yeah. Go, go, yeah. get yes. on a plane, have someone pick up your suitcase for you. And that's exactly what I right, did. Exactly. No, enjoy it. Take pictures on the beach. I mean, that's, and a, that's what I did. <laughs> I know. That's what I did. I it. And so good. it's, yeah, I, when you were saying about growing with your patience, you know, because, you know, I, I'm never leaving you. Thank so you. like, pretty, you're going to just, I, I appreciate you're, that. we're just going to, I'm going to help me grow gracefully into my eighties and, you know, oh, I love it. nip and tuck and do whatever it is because it. it's, and it's not about, I said this earlier, it's not about trying to look the same age as my daughters who are in their thirties and late twenties. It's about looking as a, for me, the best version that I can be 
based on what I've done. I have a lot of sun damage, a lot. I mean, maybe not that much, but I I have some, you know, it was, I was a product. I grew up in the sixties. So what could I do? We didn't have sunscreen then. So, you know, I accept that and I'm like, okay, what do I do? What can I do about it? Right, exactly. Right. So it's a matter of taking a realistic and a healthy and a re- healthy approach to it um, and taking the necessary steps and, you know, knowing, you know, kind of what, having a good idea of what you can get and where you want to be and being reasonable about that and having reasonable expectations. And yeah, I'm here to help you. So you've said this a couple of times yeah. and then we're, I have one more question for sure. you, but you've said the reasonable expectations, I think, and you said you have to manage those expectations. Yes. Don't you think that one of the things that makes you special is that you do have these lovely relationships with your patients, that a a surgeon that does not, somebody, especially a a plastic cosmetic surgeon, you have to have that heart in it, right? Oh, completely. You can't be just a machine. This is a relationship. Absolutely. And you talk about the hand holding after surgery and you know, how many times have I seen you? How many times have I spoken to you since your operation? I mean, never mind the number of times you've spoken to the girls in my office and And sent sent text messages and pictures. Is this okay? And is this normal? Right. You know, the surgery is really just, it's not the absolute beginning, but it's near the beginning. You know, we have a conversation or two or three and then we do surgery, but that's really just, you know, where it all starts it's getting you through the early recovery the later the later recovery you know getting you you know feeling good about each step and feeling okay with each step and you know being okay with the healing process and getting you to an end point where woohoo i look amazing i'm gonna tell the world about zuckerman and that and and that's great it's obviously what i'm what i'm going for here um but yeah i mean what it comes down to is yeah this is a relationship and it's a long-term relationship and i you know i I really enjoy that aspect of this and, you know, being able to, you know, legitimately connect with people yeah. and, you know, just be, you know, I, in the end, I'm, I'm just a guy who does plastic yeah. surgery. And I, th- I, th- I mean, I think I do very good plastic surgery. Yeah. I do say so myself. Yes, you do. You do. <laughs> but, but it's important to, to stay grounded and just, you know, be a normal person and to listen and just realize yeah. that each person is on a journey. Each patient is. I love that. You know, it, it, this is a big deal to everyone who comes through the door and, you know, just holding on to that and making sure that I never lose sight of that. I love that. That's Thanks. like so heartfelt. Yeah. And I think, again, a lot of people don't realize that surgeons go through all of these depending on who they are. I'm not saying they're all like you. And I'm so glad that I chose you. Well, thank you. I am too. And thank you for spending <laughs> this time with me. And so I have great. one last question before sure. we end the show. What does it mean for you to be fearlessly authentic? I think to me, it is having the confidence to take the necessary steps to be your best self, uh, to optimize, you know, how you, not only how you look, but how you feel and just how you are and how you think and how you exist. Um, and I think what you're doing for people here is really cool. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. you. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Joshua Zuckerman, plastic surgeon in Manhattan, um, who recently did my tummy tuck. And now we're talking about <laughs> it because I need to talk about this and help women not feel like stigmatized, not like stigmatized, but not feel stigmatized or judged or shamed for doing something that makes them feel good. We all have our own journeys, but I wanted to share this with everybody and thank you for sharing so much about what you do and how much you care about your patients. I really appreciate it. I couldn't have said it better myself, Jody. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great fun. Thank you. Thank (laughs) you. And until next week, everybody go live a fearlessly authentic life. Thank you. Bye for now.